Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The Champions League made its long-awaited return with the clash of two top teams in Guardiola's Manchester City and Zidane's Real Madrid. In an interesting encounter, the match ended 2-1 to City thanks to Sterling and Jesus, while Spenzema netted for Real Madrid. City also came out ahead on XG, 2 to 0.8. But what tactics did both managers use? In this video, we take a look. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. A quick reminder of the formations of both sides as seen on the one football app as both managers stuck to a base 4-3-3. If you want to get formations, player stats and so much more for free, you can download the app free through the link in the description below. Let's take a look at what Real looked to do with the ball. Throughout the match, Real Madrid looked to play out from the back as much as they could. City were pressing with their ever-shifting front three in most scenarios, so Real had to create a third man, primarily by splitting their centre-backs wide and Courtois pushing higher, whilst their full-backs moved higher up the pitch. The wider forwards generally pressed higher than the centre forward and Sterling in particular used curved runs well to both cover the full back with his cover shadow while supplying pressure on Militao. Foden initially here cut off the option into midfield so the easy pass was back into Courtois and from there the false nine could then look to press him using his cover shadow as well as Courtois is not good on the ball and this would force a hurried pass. And of course this is how the first goal came about. Militao gets on the ball and Sterling curves his run well, whilst Foden is on the midfielder. This time Sterling follows the pass infield, cutting off the route back into Militao, while pressing Courtois and the ball goes wide to Varane, whilst Foden is still on the midfielder cutting off the central route. Jesus wins the ball and plays it to Sterling leading to the goal. On a few occasions, Real's playing out did work. With the wingers so narrow, it meant that the fullbacks were often free, giving City's own fullbacks a decision. If they stayed deep on Real's wingers, there would be an easy outlet. But alternatively, if they pressed high, they could potentially be bypassed. And as the game went on, Real often began to drop the extra man into a double pivot, and City could be reluctant to push another midfielder as they had an eye on the free fullback. It should also be noted that on more than one occasion, Real were able to play over City's winger, and they would subsequently have a 2 vs 1 against Walker. One of the two would then look to move into the half space, and they would look to create, and they did have a big chance in this manner. But on the whole, with both teams playing a 4-3-3, it meant that things could get clogged up in the midfield, so Madrid instead looked to cause overloads wide on the left-hand side. This was often facilitated by Kroos, and sometimes even Casemiro moving wider to the left-hand side, allowing Mendy higher up and Azad inside the pitch, as shown in Real's attacking side and average positioning. City would have to shift across to compensate and Carvajal would tuck into the midfield drawing a winger or a midfielder and Benzema often moved into the right half space to draw the fullback leaving Rodrigo free. This would then allow the switch and many times this then led to a 1 vs 1. We see this in the City goal. From the goal kick, City's press is beaten and Hazard and Mendy overload the left hand side. The switch then come across and Benzema, having moved to the right, plays in Rodrigo and gets on the end of the cross. But how about City? What were they looking to do with the ball? From the goal kick, Real often applied pressure leaving Edison with no options and he had to go long much more often than usual with 24 long balls. And somewhat surprisingly, Jesus, who often pulled on to Varane, enjoyed success in the air, winning a game-high 8 aerial duels. 
and the long ball is actually how City's second goal came about. Again, Jesus causing Varane problems. But when City's centre backs had the ball initially, Benzema would look to cut off the passing options, whilst Tony Kroos was sitting on Rodri. As the ball carrying centre back came out, Kroos would then push out to apply the pressure, trying to use his cover shadow to keep the route into midfield closed. But soon, City would shift into a double pivot mechanism, with Gundogan and Rodri alongside each other, creating an extra option. As the game went on, and Real needed to be more urgent, Modric tried to push up and pressure the second man as well. However, City used rotating false nines throughout the match, who would then drop into the created space, giving Casemiro two men to deal with, so often one of them was able to receive the ball. And City's narrow forward would then look to move into the false nine position ahead of them. The wingers could be narrow in the first half, as City used their full backs more traditionally. But when they got higher up, particularly in the second half, they used interesting mechanisms. With the default 3 vs 3 in midfield, Walker began to invert much more often to form the double pivot, whilst Cancelo pushed higher up. This allowed Sterling, who was now the left winger, to play much more central. Gundogan and De Bruyne also positioned themselves higher between the lines, trying to push Real's midfield deeper. With this double pivot, Modric would often be drawn into the press, and this would lead to a massive gap here. So, a false nine, or commonly Gundogan, would drop in to receive the ball. And if the centre back followed, a man could run in behind. But if they stayed deeper, this left space for City's man to create, which they managed to do often. Overall, it was a deserved victory for City, who will be the favourites against Lyon. As always, not every tactic could be covered, so leave anything else you notice down in the comments below. And how do you think their clash with Lyon will go? And a special shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. Aidan Callan, FMR, C7H1, William Gammon, Javier Diaz, Jesse Kassebaum, Christopher Bryant, Joey Jenkins, Cho Chun, Namdi and Alex Postadny. Head over to patreon.com slash simple if you want to help support the channel. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple. Thank you.